Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle. Um, I thought about what you guys need to know about me, and I can think of two things off the top of my head that's also maybe relevant for today, okay? First is, I married my wonderful husband, Joey Carr, about four and a half years ago. Yes. And when I married him, I got blessed with the beautiful Lucy, an amazing young man, Logan, who's with us today. And uh, yes, and last year we had our baby girl. So very exciting. And the second thing you need to know about me is that I am a planner, okay? There is a reason why I plan and help organize all the major events here at the Father's House Church for the community, you know, like Madra and the Lights of Hope. So typically, you know, my calendar for the year looks like in February, we will start thinking and planning for Mud Run, which happens in June. And, you know, this year in mid-June, me and Andrew and Sean already had our first meeting for Lights of Hope, which is all the way in December. Okay, but I'm a planner. So, of course, I knew that I'm going to preach tonight, and I've been very excited, and I've been planning and praying. And I had something really beautiful planned, and I thought it was going to be an awesome first sermon for me. And two weeks ago, Jesus made it very clear to me that I had to give it up. And I was starting to be very anxious because there's only two more weeks left. It's like, okay, okay, Jesus. All right. I mean, we can work with it. So what do you want to talk about then? And he gave me one word, which is hunger. He gave me one phrase more of you, less of me, which um, actually is from John 3.30. He must increase, we must decrease. I must decrease. And he gave me a vision for altar call. And that's it. And I was like, okay. I mean, that's a great start, but that's not a lot. You know, like, if that's all, then we're going to have a very awkward evening today. It will be 25 minutes of outer call, which, by the way, I did warn the worship team. That might be the case tonight if he wants the case to go like this. All right. So, and this has been like this. And then up to Monday, I'm still praying and still got nothing else. And at this time, I'm actually really panicked. Okay. So I started to bargain with him. It's like, Jesus, come on. This is my first time preaching. I want to leave a good impression, okay? Can we save it for, you know, like my second time or fifth time or tenth time or like never, you know? And he did not give me anything more. And I kept on bargaining, you know, like, just give me something more, Jesus, because, you know, English is my second language, you know, like, oh, I will look so stupid if I go up there, and oh, I just, my mind goes blank, you know, my thoughts will leave my brain half, half mid-sentence, you know, I might stumble over my words like I just did, like, let's please give me something more, and he still didn't, and I'm going to be honest with you, I am so close to go back and grab the message that I prepared and planned that's beautiful, that I had a beautiful bow tied on it already. So close, so tempted. <laughs> but whenever I prayed, he still did not, he, you know, I just feel this fire in my heart, this fire about hunger, about more of him and less of me. And it's actually really crazy that, you know, right when worship ended, that's what Yost talked about. And he had no clue what I'm going to talk about today. He talked about this hunger, this hunger for more of him, which is just a really cool confirmation, you know. But I still wanted a bit more than just this word and this phrase and this vision of outer call. So by Monday, I was talking to two beautiful, amazing friends of mine. I was like, come on, can you guys please pray for me? You know, I need something more. And then they said, Michelle, but that's it. You are the object lesson. I was like, what? It took me a minute. And then I got it. I'm, the, the word that the Lord put on my heart is hunger. What am I hungry for? What is the hunger in my heart. Because to be honest, my hunger up till then has been, had been my comfort zone. What is comfortable for me? You know, having a beautiful message planned, you know, with my personal examples maybe tied in, and for everyone to think, oh, she looks like she has it all together. 
You know, she preached a great sermon. I had a hunger more for that than Jesus, whatever you want, and just to follow His heart. And I was convicted. Okay, and I had to repent. I had to repent many times up till tonight. <laughs> But this is my heart and my passion: is to follow Him, is to live for Him, is to be more and more hungry. For him, and more of him, and less of me. And if this less of me looks like less of the way I like to do things, less of my comfort zone, less of just the way I think, or I I like how having everything ordered and planned, but just in order to have more of him, so that it's not me speaking tonight, but him speaking. So that all I can do is just to quiet everything in me and just say, Jesus, here I am. I'm your mouthpiece. Whatever you want to say, say it through me, because this is the hunger I have in my heart for you, and I know this is the hunger that is in this church, that is in every and single one of us tonight. So, what about you? Do you also have a hunger for the Lord? To be more and more like Him, or is there something maybe in our lives that will hold us back from going after Him, from being more and more hungry for Him? You know, one of the message point here is to live in His likeness. To live, and then Steve on Sundays has been talking a lot about being owned by Him, and I find that this being owned by Him, it also involves our partnership. And our choosing. Do I choose my way, my comfort, or do I choose to go after Him, no matter what the cost is? Sometimes, just to be really honest with you guys, I may feel that the Lord asks a little bit too much of me. You know, it's like Jesus, I give you my eight to five already. You know, I am in full time ministry. What more do you want from me, all right? And I don't know about you guys. Maybe you feel like he's asking for a lot, and to step out of your comfort zone is just a little bit too much. But are you willing to go after him? Are you willing to let your hunger and your passion for him and your zeal for him to actually consume you and to lose your life? And I don't know about you, but for me, the thought of that sometimes comes with a little bit of fear. You know, like, but what if I lose who I am? You know, what if I'm completely out there? And that's when he reminded me, Michelle, I gave my all for you on the cross. I did not hold anything back. I gave you my life, and Father God gave His Son for us. There is nothing. There's no price. He has proven that there's no price. He's not willing to pay for us. So why do I feel like he's too, you know he's asking for too much sometimes? Why am I not willing to come out of my comfort zone and just to say yes, Jesus, my life is yours, whatever it looks like, even if it looks like being a fool on stage the first time I'm speaking, am I willing to go there? And again, what is it in your life? What is holding you back from being more and more like Him, from living in His likeness? Okay, I want you to look to the person on your left. Look to the person on your right. Can you confidently say to any one of them, "If you see me, you have seen Jesus"? I know I can't. There's so many things I instantly know I fall short of, but this is the call we're called to live—to live in His likeness. You know, Jesus actually told people, "Hey, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father," because He represented the Father perfectly. And we're actually called to imitate Him and to reflect Him perfectly. Can we do that, or? Is there something in our life that's not quite like Jesus? What is it that He's putting on your heart right now? What is it that He's convicting you, challenging you, or calling you deeper in your own life? 
You know, I feel like for some of us, it actually might be a sin. It might be an addiction. He wants you to give up. And it just feels like it's so hard to give that up. Almost like, who will I be if I give that up? But again, he has died for us so that he can pay for the consequences of our sin, which is death, which keeps us away from God. He paid that consequence because he wants there to be nothing between us. So every time we choose sin, we're actually choosing what will keep us being away from him. But he has such desire to be close to us that he paid with his own life. So can we respond to his love and let that go so that we can be made right, so that we can be close to Jesus? And maybe for you, he, maybe it's not a sin. Maybe he wants you to step out of your comfort zone and, I don't know, maybe join an outreach or just give someone at your workplace the Father's love letter. But does that feel so scary that you don't want to do it? Again, can you let go of your comfort zone and say, Jesus, I want to be so hungry for you that I'm willing to let everything go. I'm so hungry for you that I want to go after you and just do whatever you want to do. You have a love for my coworker here. You have a love for this person I'm meeting on the street. You have a love for my friend who doesn't know you yet. You have a desire for them to know you. Man, I want to partner with you in that. I want to join your desire. I want to fulfill your heart. And maybe he's just calling you to be more and more like him in your workplace, or in your marriage, in your family, in your class, wherever it is. Can you be more and more like him? And it can even be very small things. So I remember one time very recently, all right, um, I got something for Ellie, and Joey asked, him to ask me, wife, is this even good for her? And for some reason, I don't even know why, I got super offended. In my head, I was like, are you questioning me? Are you seriously doubting that I'm a bad mom? I would get something not good for my daughter? Like, are you kidding me? I was so mad. And then he saw that I was mad, and he said, why are you angry? And I was like, come on. First you made me mad, and then you play innocent. I can't even deal with this. I am even more mad. So I had to leave the house. I had to go on a drive. And on this drive, I was just so mad still. I was driving, driving, driving and telling Jesus, can you believe it, Jesus? How dare he question me as a mom? And you know what makes me really, really mad? This is not even the first time. He has done it this time. He has done it that time. And by the way, do you remember that time, Jesus? He's done that time too. Oh, you know what? I am going to go back to him and I'm going to tell him everything that is, you know, the reason why I'm so mad. I'm going to bring back all of these memories so that I can win this argument. Anyone know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I was still driving, and Jesus was being blessed, him being very patient. And uh, after I was done, he said, Michelle, love keeps no record of being wronged. And I said, Jesus, what do you mean? That is my best strength. That is how I win every single argument. What do you mean I cannot keep a record of being wronged? <laughs> and he said, Michelle, I don't keep a record of being wronged. And I knew instantly at that time I had a choice to make. I will either choose me, my way, Michelle, or I choose Jesus to be more like him. So I had to drive back home, and Jesus, uh, Joey was all like, why did you leave? I was like, oh, I had to talk to Je Jesus. And Joey's like, oh, what did Jesus say? I was like, I need to love you better. <laughs> and turned out he didn't even question me. We clarified it later. He was just simply asking me a question. And so Jesus, thank you for saving me from World War III in our home. <laughs> Classic Lord. <laughs> yes. <sighs> But I feel like that is the call to all of us. 
You know, no matter how big or how small it seems, whatever it is that Jesus is putting on your heart, are you willing to also let go? Maybe it's your comfort zone, maybe it's your insecurity, maybe it is your pride, whatever it is, can you let it go so that you can be more and more like him? He actually said, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny myself, pick up your cross, and then follow me. And that denying yourself, I always wanted to skip over those two words. <laughs> Because it's hard. I don't want to deny myself. It is hard to deny myself. I want what I want. But that's what we're called to as a Christian. When what we want and what Jesus wants are in conflict, we're called to deny ourselves, but to follow him. Can we do that for him? Can we be so like him that we're this bright light that everyone can see us and they will know, wow, that's what a Christian is. Wow, I see Jesus in them. And wow, Jesus must love me so much because I just feel this love from this person standing in front of me. Again, do we have this hunger for more of him in our lives? And are we willing to pay the price to go after the hunger? Are we willing to be owned by him? And that means denying ourselves. That means dying to our flesh. You know, um, one day I was just praying, you know, Jesus, I pray that I'll be your hands and feet. How many people have prayed that prayer? Oh, yeah. And then Jesus asked me, really? Do you really want to be my hands and feet, Michelle? Because my hands and my feet were what the nails have, been, have peered through on the cross. Do you still want to be my hands and feet? And I knew I have. You know, I really want to. But man, no oh man, that's a painful thought. And then I realized, but he did it for me. He did it for you. You know, the Lord's prayer that we're all going after and we're praying it says, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This means we're meant to live to glorify his name, not my name. Your kingdom come. We're meant to plan and plot and build his kingdom, not our own kingdom. When we say, Jesus, Lord, our Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It means just like the prayer Jesus had in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but yours be done. And for Jesus at that time, it was a very painful prayer. Because he knew about the torture, the betrayal, and the violent death he was going to suffer. But you know what? He still did it. Because he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. It carries a cost. It carries a very high price tag. And Jesus paid it for us. He did it to please and honor the will of the Father, and he did it to love you and me. Church, are we willing to be hungry for him? Are we willing to also say, not my will, but yours be done. I must decrease so that you can increase in my life. Less of me and more of you so that I too, just like you, Jesus, can also please the Father and to love and lay my life down for everyone around me. And now's the time I'm going to call the worship team up. And I just really want us to spend some time praying. I'm going to open the altar. If this is also your heart's desire, to have a hunger for him, to have more hunger for him, even if that means it's going to pull you out of your comfort zone, even if there is a high price tag to pay, are you willing? Are you willing to be owned by him? Are you willing to live your life just to please him, to respond to the great love, to the blood that he has shed for you on the cross? 
Or maybe you're like, man, I'm not there yet. But do you want to have more hunger? Do you hunger to have more hunger? If there's anything in your heart that's just pulling you back, like, oh, but I just don't want to give this up. Are you willing to say, Holy Spirit, empower me, strengthen me so that I can for you? Are you willing, if you want to say, yes, Jesus, more of you and less of me? Thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. And please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos or our live stream. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again soon.